Thanks be to God. This month we are exploring and looking at commitment. Commitment. This first Sunday in October, the theme is let's stay together. Let's stay together. You heard the text, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 2 through 6, 16. On September 25th of this year, Bella, a female human being, purchased Olive. Olive is a little puppy. Within 72 hours, the golden doodle puppy collapsed on its new owner. She brought her in right away to the vet, and they ran blood work and x-rays. All signs and results pointed to an infection. She wasn't stable, and the vet advised Bella to take her to the hospital for overnight care, where they would run additional diagnostics. During the time of the drive, the owner reached out to the breeder and explained what had happened with the dog. The breeder said to bring the dog to me and I'll refund you your money. But the purchaser thought, how can I drive 1.5 to 3 hours with an unstable, barely conscious, responsive puppy? And so the owner went to the hospital and took the dog. And then she took the dog home, or the puppy. By the end of the day, going to the vet and going to the hospital, having meds, having to isolate her other dogs in the household, had led to about $5,000 in expenditures. And Bella was worried. At this point, she decided, I need to rehome this dog. She was a dog mom. Her other dogs were suffering. But as I was reading this case, because I'm on a golden doodle page, because I own a golden doodle, <laughs> and there are different stories that get shared, I thought about commitment. What would you do if you had just bought a dog and within five days the dog had gotten sick and you had ended up with a $5,000 bill? Some people on the list thought to return it to the purchaser, to return it to the breeder, that the breeder would put the dog out. Would you keep the dog? Would you want to rehome the dog? But I thought about it, it really came down as to commitment. What's Bella commitment to, okay, a puppy she just met? What commitments have we made to one another or to others? When is it okay to walk away from a commitment? Is it ever okay to walk away from a commitment? And why should we be committed to one another? Why? So I have to tell you this week, and I could tell as Paul was reading the lectionary text, that this was a woozy, in case all of you don't know. In the larger church, each of us is given a lectionary text that we are to preach on. We have the choice of preaching on it or allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us somewhere else. But for this week, that was the text. Most Sundays, we are reaching back in time to see what the ancient text has to say to us today. And right away, I was like, divorce? Of all the things to talk about, divorce? The way I see it, folks are not even getting married these days. A lot of the younger generation doesn't even get married. The whole notion of marriage and divorce is very different. Relationships look very different today than they did in this biblical text. First of all, women were the property of men, and men could walk away whenever they wanted. The marriage success was solely dependent on the male. Patriarchy was the rule of that time period, and we're talking really a very heterosexual norm, and that was that. And this model of relationship is just not the way we relate to one another today. First of all, no one is the property of another. And marriage for us is based on love and chemistry and mutually uh, kind of feelings between consensual adults. And marriage here is based on property and status and honor. There are Jewish documents that go on and on and on about the topic of marriage and divorce. The Jews regarded others as having weaker standards. Those other people, they're weak, but our standards around marriage are serious. And so initially, it was hard grappling with this text and thinking of the larger church assigning us to preach it. But after days of sitting with this scripture, I started to see a light. In the biblical text, the Pharisees asked Jesus what are his views on divorce. Now Jesus knows they relate to the law, so he asked, what did Moses say? Over in Deuteronomy 24, 1-4, Moses allowed a husband to divorce his wife. 
The issue was not if divorce was lawful or not, but what constituted appropriate grounds for divorce. Could you divorce someone for not cooking? In other words, how can you get out? There's a question there that many probably like to know, how do I get out? Where are the exit doors? How do we get out if this situation no longer warrants? Recently this week, I was looking at a contract <laughs> that if I sign, I'm, 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 I'm wedded to for three years. How do I get out? What are the loopholes? And why does one need to get out unless one is unsure of getting in in the first place? I'm not even sure how concerned the Pharisees were with the question. But Jesus finally enters the discussion despite their hearts and says, two become one. And what God has joined together, let no man, let no human separate. In other words, let's stay together. And I think that's the good news for us. Ideally, God would like us to stay in committed relationships. God would like us to stay together. So for the sake of clarity, I am not saying to stay in abusive relationships. I am not saying to stay in relationships that are toxic. I am not saying to stay in relationships that deplete your emotional and spiritual bank account. I'm sure we all can think of someone we saw in a relationship and we wanted to be like, girl, God, please let it go. We wanted them to get out of that relationship because we could see it wasn't good for them, that they both deserved better, but they just weren't good together. Unequal yoke or whatever, all to water vibration, different values, different goals, different baggage, different issues, off rhythm. So I'm not saying stay at all costs. But what I think Jesus is holding up here today is the importance of commitment and trying to stay together. Instead of looking for a way out, find a way in. Years ago, John met the love of his life in college. They got engaged and planned to marry after graduating from college. Two months prior to getting married, they found out that she was bipolar. John had an important decision to make. His friends were screaming, get out. I hadn't known at the time that John was facing that situation, but it seems like something friends would say to another friend who hadn't got married yet. Get out, leave her, get away while you can. But John said, I had already made a commitment to this woman. It just wasn't official. And John stayed. They've been married for over 30 years. She hasn't worked a day in her life. They have no kids. It wasn't easy. But John said, I'm committed. I want to honor my commitment. And he stayed in the relationship. I have met folks who have stayed in bad marriages. And they read this scripture and they understand it as something that we cannot ever leave one another. I have met folks in miserable marriages and relationships who stay not because they're committed, they stay because they're stuck. People living together because this is what they believe is the law. Staying for the wrong reasons is no better than leaving for the wrong ones. Commitment means you are willing to try. Commitment means your heart is in the game. Commitment means we are trying to build something together that we couldn't do all by ourselves. Commitment means you want the best for the other person. Commitment is about um, honoring what you signed up for, even when it's hard. And it will get hard. Commitment is putting the time in. Commitment is until death do us part. That means even when one is mad as all heck at the other person, you just go off and let that steam blow off, and then you come back with the intent to work together. One of my mentors says, being a Christian would be easy if we didn't have to deal with each other. I think that's so true. You could just really do it all, right? But then you throw in other people. Jesus is challenging us that when things are tough, it doesn't mean we get to leave. It's at that time of year where we we ask you, October is the month where we ask you about your commitments financially and time. 
We haven't pushed the time thing as much, but we need you all. We're doing some wonderful things around here, but we still need more folks to get involved. I love that so many folks have gotten involved this year, but we need even more. We need folks to work with our youth. You all, we have some dynamic youth, and this is not where it's gonna connect for them. But we have about six or seven youth that are excited. What are we doing? They need our money, they need our energy, they need our time, and if we don't have it, have it, we need to raise the money to bring in a youth director. Can you believe I am saying that? Our seniors need check-ins. Our lawn needs more people to water it. Can you believe it? It drinks a lot of water. We need more help. We have various community events that we need members in the church to go to. There's a lot of stuff happening in our community. The violence has gone up in Hyde Park, and now there's a task force helping block by block to put together groups to help combat violence on your block. Violence within two blocks happened to us in the last week. The alderman has a Hyde Park Kenwood Council that needs our representation. We have now one person going off to our CAP meetings, but there's so many things happening in our community that need us. And we already have people that are burning fires at both ends. We need folks to sit around our church, not just on Sunday, but every day, to be outside and see what is happening on our lawn and in our community. We could use more folks to make sandwiches for the night ministry. We need folks willing to help us clean up the clutter in our church as we welcome a daycare here. We need our artists to help us design boards in our church. We could always use more help with social media. We need your free books. Today is the grand, oh, how many bought some books today? Oh my, oh my, I'm impressed. Today is the grand opening of our free library, and it looks like from the hands that are raised that we are going to have enough books. This is exciting. We need every member, not just the ones that are active, to get involved. Jesus holds up the possibility in this text today that through our commitments, we can stay together. It's an ideal. It's an expectation. It's a wonderful concept. Cruising this week, I heard Al Green singing, let's, let's stay together, loving you whether the times are good or happy or sad. It takes work and commitment. United has built a community. We've built a wonderful community, but if you look around, it's time for us to do even more building. Let's, let's stay together. A colleague of mine, a Lutheran colleague, I get together with a group of pastors once a month. And we're from different traditions. And one of them shared something that was weighing heavy on her heart. One of the young adults in her church had kind of stayed back when his sibling had went off because his mom was sick. And so he often hung back. But one day his mom said, you got to go. You got to go live your life. And he had always wanted to go to Japan. And he was fluent in the language. And so he got connected with a Lutheran church over in Japan. And he settled in and he fell in love with a Japanese girl. His college friends decided to send him a care package with some good old American snacks in there. But they also sent him another thing, liquid marijuana. Now, I didn't know it, and I only learned it through this group that Japan does not play when it comes to marijuana. And so they take marijuana very seriously. And so they found it in the package and arrested him and put him in jail. He stayed in jail for months, but right away, you know who showed up? The church. The Lutheran pastors over in Japan went to see him. They sent Lutheran pastors from the United States to see him. And we stayed connected to him, praying for him and lifting him up. Well, finally, in May, he got out on bail, but his court hearing is still due. What amazed me in all of this was the way in which the church showed up. That's the beauty of who we are as Christians. That's the beauty of who we are as followers of a Christ. 
is that we get to be committed to people at their lowest point. When everyone else forgets about them and they're looking at chemotherapy, the church says, hey, we are here for you. We are committed to you. Jesus went looking for that one sheep out of 99 because we are committed. Jesus met the woman at the well in the middle of the day because that's what we do. We don't give up on each other. And Jesus healed and encouraged others because we don't give up on each other. We are committed. And Jesus came down from earth because God said we don't give up on each other because this commitment thing is real. When the going gets tough, we stick around. You are my people and you are our God. Through thick and thin, through it all, let nothing separate us, says Jesus in this text today. Let's stay together. Seriously, let's really, really stay together. As our name suggests, united. Let's stay together. How important it is for us to be committed to the welfare of others. How important it is for us to remain committed to our block and our community. So much is happening right on our block. And it's important that we remain committed to what is going on in our community. We have done good work, but we have important work to do. And it requires us to stay together. I want you to find someone else in the congregation and say, let's stay together. Find someone else and say, okay, let's stay together. I've been dealing with you this long. Let's just stay together. <laughs> Let us united stay together. Amen.